many of us are aware of the stories in the Bible about Joshua. Even if for some of us, those of us with uh, greyer hair, uh, find the stories somewhat cobwebbed by the many years that have followed. After we taught them, we were taught them perhaps by our parents or at Sunday school. Uh, we may indeed, of course, have sung Joshua Fit the Battle of Jericho to our children or our grandchildren. Uh, however, just before that amazing event, two other events took place. First of all, the people whom Joshua were leading needed to cross from the east to the rest, west bank of the Jordan, and it was in flood. In a repeat of the crossing of the Red Sea, the waters briefly dried up so that the crossing could be effected. The second event was that Joshua commanded a memorial was put in place to remind future generations of just what had taken place. Memorials like this story find a frequent place in the Bible, some to mark miraculous occasions, such as that which occurred at the Jordan. Others, and this is my point, as at our gathering today, remember more solemn occasions. However, all of them are designed to invite our reflection and to direct our thoughts both backwards and upwards. Sometimes, as today, our backward glance is to tragedy, a tragedy in which lives were lost, not in the line of service, but through human error and mistakes, well away from the threat the theatre of war. So for us, and especially for some of the descendants of those who were lost and are here today, sorrow uh, is accompanied by the question, why? It's, of course, a question that resounds down the years from the mouths of, for example, victims of war, famine, poverty, and abuse. And it receives no clear answer, even when we do look up to the one we think might have ordered things very differently. For some, such events deny God, or certainly a God who might want to, they might, might want to know. However, there are those who have in the midst of their suffering, pain, doubts and deepest sorrow discovered at least something of an answer. Thus out of the experience of his own deep angst, the English poet William Cowper wrote with a sidelong look at the sea, saying, God moves in a mysterious way his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. Deep in unfathomable minds, of never-failing skill he treasures up his bright designs and works his sovereign will. And he then goes on to say, Judge not the Lord by feeble sense, but trust him for his grace. Behind a frowning providence, he hides, he hides a smiling face. Blind unbelief is sure to err and scan his works in vain. God is his own interpreter, and he will make it plain. It may be then that such an occasion as this prompts us to both look back, as it should, and look up, and discover him whom Cowper came to love and adore, even in the place of his own uncomprehending darkness.